Today we're going to talk about mapping. Mapping is actually a technique that photographers use uh, to elevate their photographic compositions and we're going to do that through our position in relationship to the subject. In this video uh, we're going to start off with an activator that I'm going to ask you guys to do as a group. Uh, we'll review some vocab from photo one, we'll introduce some new vocab, we'll talk about the assignment requirements, what grading is going to go on, and give you some examples. At the very end, I'm going to ask you guys to actually spend some time in class and take some pictures uh, to show whether you understand what I'm talking about or not. So to start, I'd like you guys to open up the Google Doc that's in Google Classroom for mapping. It's the assignment sheet and you need to follow the directions that are on that assignment sheet for the activation. It asks you to do this as a group, so I'd like you to do it as a group, and as soon as you have an answer, I want you to jot that down and show it to Mr. McVitty. So you can stop the video here for a second, go ahead and work on that as a group, and then come back to the video when you're done. So we need to talk about some vocab from photo one. To start, we're going to talk about angle of view. And if you think back to photo one, I know some of you it may have been a little while. Um, angle of view is how much the camera is looking at. It's limited by your equipment and its capability. We use terms like close up, wide angle, or panorama. It's how much uh, that camera can see. The second term from photo one we need to talk about is point of view, and point of view is your relationship height-wise to your subject. So if you think back, you had to do bird's eye and worm's eye. We also talked about eye level, uh, where we always see things. These two things are paramount to getting mapping to work for you. If we don't change our angle of view or we don't change our point of view, uh, we just have straight on views that get boring. And so using mapping as a technique to get you to move around your subject um, it is an easy way to uh, elevate your pictures. So you guys were asked to define mapping. Um, you showed it to me. Hopefully you're pretty close. Uh, but if not, it's basically moving around your, your subject, uh, changing angles and points of view um, so that you can create alternate views of your subject rather than just straight on uh, portrait photographs or uh, yearbook photographs or whatever you're used to doing. Uh, we get away from that snapshot thing. The last term we need to talk about, I'm using loosely here. You're going to run into bracketing again when we talk about depth of field. Um, but bracketing is basically a technique where a photographer takes multiple images in a row of the same subject changing something. In the mapping case, you're either going to be getting higher or lower, you're going to be getting closer, backing off. You might even change lenses in the middle of this um, to try and get those pictures. When we talk about bracketing later, um, you're going to actually change settings and take the exact same picture multiple times and see which setting you like better. Uh, so let's look at the assignment. In the video I'm going to show you here in a second, it's going to show you how I went about mapping a student sculpture. Basically you need to be uh, with a subject that will allow you to move 360 degrees. You may photograph people or objects for this. Don't forget a model release form if you're going to take photos of a person. Um, but you need to be able to move around them. You're going to be very active as the photographer. So here I'm actually using a fixed focal length lens so I can't zoom in or out. I have to move for it and I have a shallow depth of field which will mean more to you uh, in the next shooting assignment. But I move around the subject, I get close to it, I change my angle to it, um, playing around with um, you know, the depth of field a little bit if I want to. Um, but I'm basically looking for interesting shots. I'm shooting a digital camera so it doesn't cost me anything. I'm going to keep hitting the button and hope that I'm catching stuff. But again, by setting myself up to move around and change my angle, I can get interesting pictures. So let me show you um, what the results of this were. So there's a fairly normal straight on, but I really like the texture, so I get zoomed in on the head or the body. You can see the depth of field is a little messed up. I have a really weird background there. 
Um, and here's that close-up of the texture that I really like. By moving around and capturing, we're searching for images that we really like. So you're going to be doing four final images um, that are can be from different subjects. They can be um, from any angle of view. They can be in color, black and white. It really doesn't matter. You're going to curate four images, meaning you're picking four images that are strong. You're not just picking them to pick them and get them in and get the assignment done. They need to be really good photographs. And if you don't have four really good standalone photographs, then you need to rephotograph. The second part of the final image count here is going to be that you're going to actually need to create a composite image that takes multiple views of a single subject and puts them together in a final piece or collage. For this, you're going to be using InDesign, and we'll get together and work on that in the week after your negatives are due and talk about that. So, as with most of your shooting assignments from Photo One, you need to take at least 24 negatives. I would highly recommend not really worrying about just getting 24. I'd take as many as you can get, many different subjects as you can. Um, so that you have a lot to work with. It'll save you some time in the long run. Um, you're going to be uh, editing the final image it is in Photoshop, uh, and you'll be putting together the uh, composite image in InDesign. So example-wise, um, just to sort of show you um, some images that I think aren't too bad, um, they're sort of taken quickly, um, but here you have the close-up of the eye of a person, a very interesting way to photograph your subject. You see these a lot of different places. It's still a pretty strong photograph. Um, this is actually the slab roller in the clay room. Um, and just sort of looking at that industrial, trying to make it almost like a formal um, layout, um, formally balanced layout, but I don't quite have the formal balance, but that's okay. Um, it's just sort of looking at it from a different angle and being close up. Your composite image, so going back to that sculpture, your composite image may be something like this. Uh, again, this is just f as a um, example. It's maybe not the best one. Uh, could I have done better with some of these? Yes. Um, but I think you get the point. You're going to play around with one subject that it's multiple views being shown uh, in one final piece. So what I'd like you guys to do um, today or tomorrow, if you don't have your cameras with you today, not a big deal. Um, I actually want you to have your camera, and in class, you guys are going to pick, whether it's each other um, or objects around the room, and I want you to practice mapping a subject in class. Basically, what I want you to do is pick a subject and take a minimum of six pictures of that subject from different angles, um, from, from different elevations, different angles. Um, and play around with that. You're going to show these images to me at some point so we can discuss them and make sure that you're on the, the right track when you go to get your negatives. As with any kind of classroom exercise, um, these images will not count towards your 24 negative count, and I do not want to see these objects um, from school in your final portfolio. So go ahead and start taking some pictures.